Last class we discuss about autotrophic nutrition. So best example, green plants and green algae. Those are the autotrophic nutrition. So today we are discuss about the heterotrophic nutrition. So what is the heterotrophic nutrition? So heterotrophic nutrition means so here some animals or living organisms depend upon the depend upon another animals for their needs. So that type of nutrition is called the heterotrophic nutrition. Heterotrophic nutrition. So here mainly three types of nutrition is there. So here one is the sapro saprophytic nutrition, parasitic nutrition and halogoic nutrition. Next one, halogoic nutrition. So once again children, heterotrophic nutrition means the three kinds of nutrition is there. One is the saprophytic nutrition, parasitic nutrition, next one, holozoic nutrition. Holozoic nutrition. So what is the saprophytic nutrition? What is the saprophytic nutrition? Some organisms break down the food materials outside of the body and uh, <coughs> outside of the body then absorb it. So that is called the saprophytic nutrition. That is called the saprophytic nutrition. So example bread mold, yeast, mushrooms, etc. Once again, saprophytic nutrition. Saprophytic nutrition means some organisms break down the food material outside of the body and then it absorb it. That is called the saprophytic, saprophytic nutrition. So example bread mold, yeast, mushrooms and etc. Next one, parasitic nutrition. So here parasitic nutrition, some organisms take the nutrition from the plants and other animals without killing the animals. Without killing the animal or plants, that is called the parasitic nutrition. Parasitic nutrition. Example, pasuta, lice, leeches and take bombs. So, example, pasuta, lice, leeches and take bombs. Next one, holozoic nutrition. Third one, holozoic nutrition. Here, here, some living organisms take their food totally and take inside the body. Take whole part of the food material into their body. That is called the holozoic nutrition. Best example amoeba and human boy, human beings. Here, if you observe the in single cellular organisms or unicellular organisms, best example amoeba. So it is no definite shape. No definite shape. So if you observe the amoeba, this is this is the amoeba. So this is the nucleus. So this one, this one is the cytoplasm. It is cytoplasm. So if you observe the finger-like projections, if you observe the finger-like projections, it is called the pseudopodia. Pseudopodia. So pseudopodia. So <coughs> these are called the pseudopodia finger-like projections. Finger-like projection. Next one, when food is come to near, so at that time this finger like projections are up by the food material and form a food vacuum. Food vacuum. Here some enzymes are released and break down the complex material into the simple compounds. Break down the food material into simpler forms. That is called the digestion. That is called the digestion. Here this food material break down into simple compounds. Again, so this food material is absorbed into cytoplasm. Cytoplasm. So enter into the cytoplasm through the process of diffusion. Diffusion. Through the process of diffusion. So, so remaining waste materials, undigested materials are come outside of the body. Come outside of the body. This type of nutrition is called the holozoic nutrition. Best example amoeba. So another one unicellular organism that is called the paramecium. Another example paramecium. It is also known as slipper animal cure. So if you observe the shape of the paramecium, it is like a one. <coughs> uh, Slipper. 
So that the, that's why this is called the slipper animal cure. If you observe this one, when food is, so these are the outside of the finger like projection, this is called the cilia. It is called cilia. So with the help of cilia, so this organism entire is moving from one place to another place. So another use also is there, when food material is available at that time, that one also move through the help of cilia. So, with the help of cilia, these food materials move into this spot, wall spot. So, after that, that one enter into the cytoplasm. So, inside the body is forming the food vacuum. Food vacuum. So, here some enzymes are uh, react on this complex compounds. It is a turning breakdown into the simple compounds. Simple compounds. After that, it can so digested material is absorbed so remaining waste material undigested materials are removed through the anal pore reach the anal pore through the uh, anal pore it is come outside of the body come outside of the body so it is called holozoic nutrition this is also best example holozoic nutrition paramecium amoeba okay these are the animals. Now we discuss about the plants. So if you observe the plants, plants, best example, Kasuta. Kasuta. So Kasuta. This is a common name Doder plant. Doder plant. It is belongs to Kasuta. Genus Kasuta. Genus Kasuta. So here if you observe this one doda plant it is a leafless plant leafless plant parasitic plant next one <coughs> twinless twinning plant twinning plant in this genus if you observe nearly 170 species is there nearly 170 species is available in our earth in our earth so it is belongs to Morning glory family. Morning glory family. Morning glory family. So, Convalinacea. Convalinacea also. It is the family. So, completely it is the leafless. Means no chlorophyll. It cannot prepare their own food. That's why it can depend upon another plant. They can collect their food and water, everything from the host plant. This type of nutrition is called the parasitic nutrition. Parasitic nutrition. So, how it can absorb the food material? How it can absorb the food material? So, hope soldiers, if you observe the yellow tree or branches, it can stable here. So, it can Project the some root like structures, these are called pastorias. Pastorias, with the help of pastorias, they can absorb the food materials from the host plant. This is the host, host plant. From the host plant, they can absorb the water, water, and food. So, where get the water, where get the food? So, here in the host plant, so two types of tissues is there. One is the xylem, one is the xylem, second one is the phloem. Phloem. So, from the xylem, they get the water. They get the water. Next one, phloem. From the phloem tissue, they can collect the food material. They can collect the food material. So when it is different color this one, gradually it can uh, spread into the another branches. Another branches. Here also it can also blooming, blooming the flowers. It can also develop the seed. It can develop the produce the seeds. Okay, children, how it can germinate? How it can develop? So just when when the seeds are fall on the land or soil, when seed is germinate, it can develop the it can develop temporary root. 
temporary root. After that, it can grow into tiny light. No leaves. No leaves. When it can grow in light and small, it has post plants. So at that time, it can twin it. Twin it like that. So with the help of hook like structures, that is called the osteoids. Hook like structures. With the help of hook like structures, these are called the osteoids. They can develop an entire plant. They can spread into the entire, entire plant. So after that, after few years, gradually this host plant will die. Host plant will die. So automatically this parasitic plant also will die. So this is the one type of parasitic nutrition. So here cascuta. Cascuta that is belongs to this uh, genus cascuta. This is the dodal plant. Dodal pomene. So genus cascuta. So it is belongs to the morning glory family or convolutionary family. Okay. Here root like structures of osteoids. It is very very helpful to the plant. They can uh, collect the food material and water from everything from the uh, with the help of osteoids. From with the help of osteoids. So it is the uh, nutrition in an animal uh, plants. First the next one digestion in human beings. Digestion in human beings. Mainly when we can observe the so digestion in human beings. So mainly in the human digestion. What is the digestion means? We when you are taking the food, that is the complex material. It is break down into simple compounds that is called the digestion. Digestion. Okay. So in this digestion, we have the one in human body have the one the system that is called the digestive system. Digestive system. So if you observe the digestive system, that is the one for pipe-like structure. Pipe-like structure. It is start with the mouth and end with the anus. Start with the mouth and end with the anus. So first one, first one. If you observe here. So this is called the bucket cavity. It is called the main parts bucket cavity. Bucket cavity. So if you observe the bucket cavity, here some parts is there. In the bucket cavity, we have we can observe the some parts. What are the parts? First one, uh, tongue, tongue, teeth. So these are the main pores. Next one, salivary, salivary glands, salivary glands. These are the main pores. One is in the bucket cavity. We can observe the thigh, teeth, and salivary glands. So here, what we can discuss about the every pore. So main first one, teeth. So if you observe the human beings. Human beings, two types of two set of teeth is there. So in the early world, in the early world, we can observe the uh, <coughs> temporary teeth. Temporary teeth. It is also called milk teeth. Milk teeth. Milk teeth. So here, twenty twenty teeth is a milk teeth. So gradually in adulthood it can develop into the permanent teeth. Permanent teeth. It has thirty two. Every human being in the adulthood has the thirty two teeth. Thirty two teeth. Here nearly depend upon their food habits. Depend upon their food habits. It is teeth also different types. Mainly in the human being we can observe the. Four types of teeth. Four types of teeth. One is called incisors, incisors, canine, canines. So premolars, premolars and molar, and molars. So every teeth have some specific function. Every 
teeth have the one specific function incisors incisors in the name also have the scissor so with the help of incisors we cut the food material we cut the food material that is called the incisors incisor can i can i so here these canine teeth are very helpful in the carnivores carnivores plants the carnivores animals carnivores animals so here very helpful to tearing the flesh tearing the flesh next one premolars and molars premolars and molars these also very helpful to grinding and crushing grinding and crushing so if you also incisors are very developed in herbivores in herbivores next one canines canines are very helpful to uh, in carnivores animals carnivore animals so it is very helpful to tearing the flesh it is very helpful to cutting the food material cutting the food materials so this is the types of teeth so if you observe the types of teeth if you take the half part of the jaw half part of the jaw here incisors are two canine one so premolars two and molars three if you take the one jaw this is the lower jaw you take one part of one part so here these are the types Two one two three. This is the dental formula. Dental formula of the human being is very very important. Dental formula. So what is the dental formula? Two one two three by two one two three. Two one two three by two one two three. This is the dental formula of the human being. Dental formula of the human being. Once again, children, incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. So these are the four types of teeth. It is very helpful to uh, cut the food material, break down the food materials, break down the food materials. Incisors, incisors are cut the food materials. Canines, canines tearing the flesh and uh, premolars and molars are very helpful to crushing and grinding the food material. So this is the main function of the teeth. Next, dental formula of the human being it is U of examination. It is very very So two one two three by two one two three. Which this is the dental formula of the human being. Dental formula of the human being. Next one, salivary glands. If you observe the salivary glands, here in the in our bucket part, three pairs of three pairs of glands is there. Three pairs. Three pairs of salivary glands is there. They can secrete the saliva. They can secrete the saliva. Here, three pairs of where it is located. If you observe the lower jaw, lower jaw, one pair of one pair of salivary glands are located. So near near the beside the lower jaw. Another one below the ears. So last one, last one. So that can uh, enter into the palate, enter into the palate. So these are the three pairs of the salivary glands. They can secrete the saliva, saliva. Okay, <coughs> saliva. It can secrete the saliva. Salivary salivary glands are secreted the saliva. Here, how many pairs of salivary glands? Three pairs of salivary glands. Okay, children. Now, when we are taking the food with the help of teeth, we are chewing. At the time, at the time, here one another part of it is there. It is completely made up of uh, made up of muscle. That is called thigh. So, on the thigh, we can observe the taste buds. With the help of taste buds, we can taste it. We can taste. It. What is the taste? Mainly four. Types of taste: <coughs> sweet, sweet, sour, bitter, bitter, and sour. These are the four types. Four types of the taste buds are available on the tongue. With the help of taste buds, we can.
can recognize the taste of the food material. Okay. At the same time, another function. So with the help of time, we can move the food material and send the food material into the food pipe. That is the use of the time. So here, what is the use of the saliva? Saliva is a useful to the like a lubricant. Lubricant. So in the saliva, one um, enzyme is there. That is called the amylase. Amylase. Amylase or thiol. Thiol. So these are the enzymes. So these enzymes are react on carbohydrates. They can simplify the carbohydrates into the maltose. Into the maltose. That is the main function of the amylase. So what is the main function? Carbo on the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. So here amylase. React on amylase or thiolin. Thiolin, it can change into convert into simple compound that is called the maltose. Maltose, convert into the maltose. That is the use of the saliva. So saliva have amylase. So in the amylase it is the one enzyme. So so it is also known as thiolin. Thiolin, it is convert the food made. Uh, so that is the main function of the bucket cardi. Next one, put by next part. So next one, put by food by. If you observe the food by like this one, this is. 25 centimeters long. It is 25 centimeters long. So this is the food pipe. So inside the all of the food pipe, some mucus layer is there. Mucus layer is there. Mucus layer is there. When food is swallowing, when food is when food is swallowing. So when we are taking the food, at that time this food moves. Here some uh, movements is there. That is called the peristaltic movements. Peristaltic movements. That movements look like a wave. Look like a wave. This type of movements is called peristaltic movements. Peristaltic movements. With the help of peristaltic movements, it can it can move downwards and hand into the Stomach. This type of movements is called peristaltic movements. Peristaltic movement. These are children here when we are in the bubble cavity when uh, food is break down, crushing, and uh, after then mixing the saliva. It, here this food material is called the bolus. Bolus. So in the bubble cavity, the food is called the bolus. That is the semi solid. Semi solid. That process, semi solid process, that is called the mastication. So, the breakdown of the complex food material into simple material, that is called the mastication. The process is called the mastication. It is very, very important. One mark in the in view of the examination, it is one more question. What is the mastication or define the mastication? So mastication means so simplify the material into so complex material into simple compounds like semi solids, slippery semi solid. That is called the mastication. That is called the mastication. That two minutes also name our name is there. That is called the bolus. That is called the bolus. So when through the peristaltic movements, food is come downwards. Downwards and reach the one sac like structure that is called the stomach. Next part, stomach. Stomach. So, here also one mucus layer, one mucus layer is there. So, here these walls of the stomach is secreted the gastric juices. 
gastric juices here stomach is secreted the gastric gastric juices so this gastric juices have contain two types of acid hcl plus hcl plus pepsin pepsin so here everyone have the some function here everyone have the some function here hcl when food come reach the stomach here food is churning food is churning and mixing so here hcl this walls are produced to the hcl and pepsin hcl and pepsin so here hcl are the kill the germs here hcl kill the germs here hcl percentage ph of the hcl 1.5 to 2 ph it is a high concentrated acidic nature acidic nature so in this nature most of the completely germs are killed here okay so already we discussed in the bucket cavity through the mastication process already carbohydrates are partially digested partially digested <coughs> here if you take any food material in the food we have the major nutrients carbohydrates proteins and fats carbohydrates proteins and fats okay children here carbohydrates already digested in the mouth portion now fats are digested in the stomach so here proteins proteins digested on the pepsin react on pepsin so change into peptides 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 so here pepsin is uh, react on protein digest the proteins hcl kill the bacteria kill the bacteria that is the main function of the hcl hcl so here from the acidic nature from the acidic nature so yes uh, some walls are protected from the mucus layer mucus layer okay children here one of uh, walls flap like wall also is there it is called the sphincter it is also called sphincter why because it is not uh, send the food medium to the upwards it can only allow the downwards only not send out, uh, upwards sometimes only sometimes only it can uh, through the process of vomiting it can come outside that is when food is poisoning so at that time only let's see so when you are taking the food material when you are taking the food material at the time some gas also we can take so that is come and set it here gas is set in here this is the part of this one stomach so gas totally set in here at the same day here also end of the stomach beginning of the stomach and end of the stomach also sphincters are available Spring chatters. This is called the spring chatter. Okay. It can also allow the food material. After churning, after churning the food materials, it is called chyme. It is called chyme. So here is the nature. This is children. In the bucket cavity, food is called the bolus. Next one, in the stomach, food is after digestion. That is called the chyme. That is called the chyme. Next, another part, liver. So it is available. So, so it is called the brown color. That is the back side of the stomach. It is behind the stomach. Behind the stomach, mainly three lobes is there. Two lobes is there. Okay, in the here, from here, some juices are secreted. Bile juices. It is called the bile. Bile juices. So, what is the main function of the bile juices? So, these bile juices react on fat. Fat. So, here. So, fat. This is the complex material. So, complex fat materials are simplified into small particles that is called the emulsification emulsification so 
bind which is separated from the liver to the liver so this bind juices are stored in the ball like structure it is called the gall bladder that is called gall bladder so this bind juices are separated and stored in the gall bladder so next one so emulsification that is the warm up portion or half mark portion what is the emulsification emulsification means fat molecules complex fat molecules are turned into simple molecules simple compounds that is called the emulsification it is for the emulsification so this by juices are <coughs> released into the so small wow, pipeline structure into the duodenum duodenum so this is the small intestine starting of the small intestine it is called the duodenum this is the u shape it can release into the duodenum release into the duodenum it is alkyl alkyl state so actually here acidic acidic nature so when acidic nature that food if it is released into the duodenum it cannot digest the food so that's why here it can uh, dilute with the alkyl state it can so at the alkyl state only some pancreatic juices pancreatic juices are enzymes are active in the alkyl state only it can active so that's why here must bile juices are released it can neutralize the chyme neutralize the chyme so okay children so much next class